If you are planning to apply for a PhD program, you are probably getting advice from dozens of students, professors, administrators, your parents, and the internet. Sometimes it's very hard to know which advice to focus on and what will make the biggest difference in the long run. Here is the interview with one of the PhD students within the Research School of Chemistry, Australian National University ANU, who just had his end of term seminar. And you might find his story helpful to make a better decision as you embark on that path to a PhD. PhD, well, uh, I never really had any ambitions to do a PhD initially. Um, when I first started uni, I guess I was just looking to uh, get my degree and start working. But uh, I got a little bit of a taste for research in my third year uh, when I did a project and uh, that made me move on to, to do honours. And um, I had a really great experience in honours and um, with the whole research experience and uh, everything that, that goes with it, particularly the freedom that you get with uh, your own research project. And uh, a PhD after that just sort of made sense. I probably moved here mostly for the university rather than uh, Canberra specifically. But uh, having been down here for just over three years now and moving from Sydney, it was quite a change. Uh, but I would say that uh, the, the change is something that's been really nice. Um, the, the style and the pace of life here is a little bit slower than what it would be in Sydney. And um, it's been nice to experience that sort of different uh, lifestyle. But it's very much, I'm here for the ANU and I'm here for what the ANU has to offer. A PhD, in my mind, is still a big learning experience. You're still a student, you're classified as a student. And so uh, trying to expose um, yourself to as many techniques and as many different uh, styles of doing science um, to find what works for you and to find what's uh, a better option for you is, is probably of paramount importance when you're looking at um, navigating your way through the PhD. So I think I, I agree with that statement, mostly to the fact that uh, you're still a student, you still got a lot to learn, you, you come in, you don't know everything. Um, at the end, hopefully you know uh, a bit more than you did at the start, but um, particularly getting a diverse feel for um, how different people think and how different people do science and what they do to achieve their end goal and their objective in science is, is probably more of a, uh, a better outcome for a PhD. Um, at least that's what I've found over the last three years. If I went back, would I do a PhD? Uh, yes. Yes, I would do it again. Um, I feel like it's been a really good experience and I, I look at myself three years ago um, and think about how far I've come and um, the personal growth along with the, uh, the scientific growth and your training and your, um, uh, your thought processes that are associated with science but also the way you see the world and the way you see um, yourself and how you fit into it I suppose. Um, has definitely changed as I've progressed through the last three years. So um, yeah, I have no regrets in terms of uh, undertaking a PhD and uh, definitely would do it again. Yeah, so um, when I originally uh, did an honours project, which was back in Sydney, it was associated with uh, neurodegenerative disease. And uh, I have a significant interest in that because it runs in the family. And so I really wanted to work on uh, something related to things like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, uh, things that are inherently associated with something called protein aggregation. And uh, while I was looking for a, a new supervisor um, for my PhD project, I came across uh, John Carver, who's uh, here at the Research School of Chemistry at ANU, and uh, his line of work working on uh, these molecular chaperone proteins, these small hedgehog proteins that are associated with stopping this protein aggregation uh, and hence might have a role in preventing these diseases of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's that are related to protein aggregation. Uh, that was really interesting to me and sort of finding out how these guys worked 
and uh, how they did what they did and most importantly why they stopped doing what they're meant to be doing with regards to the disease. Um, that was really interesting to me and so that's sort of why I ended up here and why I ended, started talking to John in the first place and how I ended up in the, uh, the Carver Lab specifically. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting question. Um, the, the most obvious choice, as you mentioned, is teaching um, and whether that's taking tutorials or demonstrating. I was lucky enough to be a, a RSC teaching fellow and um, had well, two and a half years of, of tutoring and, and demonstrating and even some lecturing in the bridging course. And uh, that's been really great for um, broadening my scope in terms of my teaching ability and uh, in terms of particularly communication, which helps in science, getting your message across, um, talking to people that might not necessarily know what you're talking about and, and making sure you understand um, what they do and don't know and how you can then speak to them in such a way that, that helps them to grasp what you're talking about. Um, so making something simple is uh, a big part of, I think, being in your PhD and I think helping yourself to achieve that by teaching and demonstrating is a, is a huge part and a lot of people look upon that favorably for both the, the teaching ability and your communication skills that you can then use um, within your science. I think the ANU, uh, particularly the RSC here, um, has some great programs where they, where they hire students and uh, to either work in the mass spec facilities or help with um, X-ray crystallography or NMR or, or technical lab um, situations. And so if students can sort of get into those roles as well, um, I think it really helps their, uh, not only their understanding, but also to, to show their, their diversity of skills. And so I think helping to volunteer um, and helping to teach and basically get involved in the activities of the school uh, all help to, to boost your resume beyond just being a research scientist. Yeah, um, definitely do something that you love. You have to find something you're truly interested in and passionate in um, because there's going to be jubilant highs and crushing lows and uh, to navigate your way through those crests and troughs um, you need to be sustaining yourself with the passion of what you're studying and how interested you are in it and wanting to know the answer and trying to find the answer. And uh, I think that is the primary piece of advice that I would give someone wanting to undertake a PhD. Look for something that you're interested in and follow your passion and uh, even when things aren't going the right way uh, you'll still have the uh, the motivation and the strength to keep pursuing your end goal. Yeah a lot of people have been asking me that lately. Um, I'm gonna be honest and say I, I'm still not sure. Uh, I've got to produce my thesis now and it has to go be examined and hopefully in that process I publish some papers uh, which is certainly going to help if I want to maintain a research profile. So, um, you know, one of the options is uh, go and uh, continue research and be a postdoc, um, potentially overseas. Uh, probably be a good experience for a few years. Uh, a couple of other options that pursue my interest in teaching. Um, I've sort of got several different avenues that I could take. Uh, with regard to that, whether that might be a high school level or even a tertiary level. Um, and probably another idea is perhaps to move into industry or even public service and uh, use the skills that I've got from a PhD here at the RSC and um, sort of translate those into another type of work environment, which uh, I know that a scientific uh, skill set given that you're use, using analytical skills and uh, also trying to communicate uh, often technical information to a, a sort of uninitiated audience uh, is very handy in a lot of different corporate and um, public service based settings. So um, I've got a couple of different ideas but I probably don't have the uh, 
a definite answer yet. Maybe ask me again in six months. I said, I'm going to be wandering around. I can't keep my feet planted. Alright, or to test to see if the sound is working today. And Ali's hair is very distracting. What's up? Uh, it's good? Yeah, this is good too. Should get an ANU cup, really. That's uh, it's not very. Professional. Alright. <laughs> For the last question. Um... <laughs> you don't know what the question is? No, I don't. Jeez, this is a, it's a bad interview. <laughs>